Smashamaniacs. Gearheads. Well, welcome to Geo Gearheads. This is a weekly show about geocaching and geo geolocation games. I am Chris of the Northwest, along with our host, Daryl W4. And Daryl, can you believe this is episode 348? What I can't believe is it's just two more weeks and we're at 350. That's something. Which we're going to be talking about uh, AR caches for 350, which I thought was... Uh, oh, the pirate caches. Pretty cool, yes. R caches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I don't do that very well. That's uh, <laughs> that's right near International Talk Like a Pirate Day. Is it? Mm -hmm. Well, how appropriate is that? I should have. I want to say it's September to 18th better. this year. Ooh. Mm. So, so get your best pirate accent so to go. So we're getting it maybe. out ahead of uh, Talk Like a Pirate Day because it's the 13th and the next show would be the 20th. So see, I, I did plan it well. Mm -hmm. Oh, you did, matey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you're so much better at it than I am and you're not but very speaking good. of R, we have a guest. R Reagan. R. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I don't think I've ever done a pirate introduction for oh, anything oh, oh, oh. before. And Max talking. wants to know about International Taco Pirate Day. Oh, that's where you go and steal other people's tacos, right? Oh, I think I'm all in on this one. Are we talking about cash tour? <laughs> Arr, but we are, matey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my! Taco I'm so day. sorry. I don't know about Taco Pirate Day. I'm gonna have to Google that. <laughs> I know. I, I want that day. I want that day very badly. But well, it is on, uh, our on pirate day. You can steal door. other people's tacos anyway. You don't have to be Taco Pirate Day. Well, but the Taco Pirate Day gives you uh, uh, free reign to do it without repercussions, aside from you know someone stealing your tacos. Wow, what comes around goes around. <laughs> My own way, my own. Anyways, yes, yeah, so this is our uh, third show on Cash Tour. And unfortunately, uh, Plato Attic had uh, other engagements that uh, popped up at the last minute. So it's just rich. Thanks again for uh, coming on. And the first thing I think we should probably talk about is that app was brand new when we talked about it last. And um, Thomas actually pushed an update like mm -hmm. right before the show and completely confused us. So let's get an update <laughs> as to what the uh, new features have been <clears throat> since uh, the last time we talked. Yeah. Let me, let me tell you what's been up. I'm just back from a eight day, 1400 mile road trip planned in cash tour and executed with the app. Um, which was, it was a great trip, but you know, we I got to go to the little town of Bieber and find the cash, Justin Bieber which was just in Bieber. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. Oh, man. <laughs> it, it's a bad pun uh, paradise. The title was the hint. <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, um, if you're ever up that way, you need to go for that one. But so we had the trip was uh, executed very well with the app, uh, flirted with the uh, California fires on three different occasions. And we got went through last and saw boiling mud pots and lava tubes and exciting things like that. And down to Bodie to see California's official ghost town. Ooh. And yeah. I didn't know they had an official ghost town. It is a state park. Indeed. Um, and then coming back, there were three convenient Trans Sierra highways, but two were closed from fires. And so I had planned the route to come back over Highway 88. And the night before we came back, they reopened Highway 108, which was my preferred one. So I replanned the route using just an iPad and cache tour and the geocaching.com site to create a new route right there in the motel room and executed it on the app the next morning. So that was a real field test. Very cool. So anyway, I, I tried doing a uh, uh, route. Uh, we were going to a theme park with the uh, kids. Uh, and I just basically used it as a bookmark, uh, uh, tool ah. and found that it, it works, but mm -hmm. really wasn't worth the effort. Cause it took more time than it was worth. It's like, I I'm forcing it into the uh, solution yeah. here and it just wasn't worth it. 
uh, Procrustean bed and all that. Um, <laughs> talk about the new features. Uh, yeah, like you say, Tom Frey was adding features as we were having the last podcast. Um, and so what I've got to talk about are what he added, but what he added is, is in two chunks because those who have Android devices will see all of these features. Those who have iOS will only see the first two I mentioned because he just couldn't get through struggling with Apple to get the final version published before he had to hit the road. So when he comes back, that'll get sorted. So you got something to look forward to if you're on an iOS device. So the first thing was to, when you start a trip, the ETAs for each of your stops come from the website, the planning on the website. And what often happens is you think you're going to leave at 8.30. Well, that doesn't happen. Nobody ever gets out on time. So you leave at 9, and it thinks you left at 8.30. And the first cache you get to, it gets very confused because it thought you left at 8.30, and now it thinks you're behind by quite a bit more than you really are because you didn't really leave. So there's a new feature called clear the ETA overrides, which just wipes them all out. And the first one you enter establishes your start point for the day and it recomputes everything for the day. And now you're, you're on schedule until you truly fall behind or get ahead at that point. So you're that on I, schedule until you're not. Yeah, I always use that now <laughs> because whatever I figure I'm going to do on the website rarely is my departure time. I get out early, I get out late. So that's handy. He's added a route map. So you can bring up a map and see your stops, your route along the map with the caches on it. Uh, if you have the iOS version, the icons are really big, but that's gonna that's fixed in, in, the, in the real release. But you can at least see the map and you can see the icons in the route. Uh, after that, everything else is going to show up for iOS later and is there for Android now. Uh, the map will has an option where you can turn on show me my current location and you can turn on follow my location. So the little little blue guy walks along the route with you as you move along. You can, he's added, so you can, if you've added cache or comments, which are distinct from the web, you know, geocaching.com comments, you can see those in the app and you can see if a cache has been disabled in the app, that's new. You can access downloaded trips for up to a week uh, and you have an option he, I, I made some comment for him, and he took it to heart. I said, Does, can, can you make this thing speak? He said, yeah. So now when you tap arrived, it says, you are 10 minutes ahead of schedule. Or you are 20 minutes behind schedule if you turn this on. And the display at the bottom, which just shows you a text from before, will also speak it if you tap it. So you can you can get an audio cue while you're driving along, and each time you arrive. Um, uh, hold, hold on, Rich. I'm I'm getting breaking news right now oh. that everything is available for both platforms. Ooh, ooh, cool. He he likes to do this to you right when you're on the show is when I the know. stuff drops. Hey, thank you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, back to our show. Back to the show. And there's a link to open a, open a trip directly into the cashtore.no, but that requires a data link, of course, to get to the, web, the website, a convenient thing. Um, so those are the new features. Um, I'm sure he, as he did his trip and picked up the last two states of the 50 he needed, that he used the app and came up with other cool ideas, which we'll soon hear about and, and see appearing. I fed him a few other ideas. Plato Addict has fed him some. So he's got he's got something to come back to. We wouldn't want him to come back and not feel like there was nothing to do. So yes, the app, the app was wonderful. Um, the usage was really nice. I would just simply open a cache, press map, which would trigger the navigation system, Google Maps. As soon as I arrived, I pressed the cache tour no link back link in iOS. And I long pressed the arrived icon which marks arrived and opens cache store directly to the cache. So it's only two taps. And when I finished in cache in Cashly, I simply backlink and I'm ready to do the next one. So you can't get much simpler than that. Uh, particularly handy if you're soloing. If you've got a navigator to do the work for you, eh, put them to work. But uh, I loved it. So on to that topic everyone is keen to know about is routing and ETAs. Yes. Um, there's a lot of confusion around this. Uh, Cache Tour has 
two types of routing features. And you need to keep these separated in your mind. There's creating a route from waypoint to waypoint that respects the order in the waypoint list. And this is the technical sense of the route in which it in which you've got all the waypoints, you want to figure out how long it takes to get from each one to the next, ETAs and so on. But it's not going to rearrange those waypoints for you. Okay, whatever you have is what is going to be your route. There's a separate feature um, called optimizing waypoints, which we'll talk some more about, which will help sort the waypoints into a better order for you. Now, we got to step back a minute and talk about the trip itself, because trips can be driving or hiking. And they can be other things, too. But those are the primary things. And there's an overall trip setting. You either drive or you hike. And then within the trip, you can change your mode of transport from one waypoint to the next. So you might drive to this park, which has 10 caches in it. Then you want to go into walking mode and do all of those and come back out, get in your car, and drive to the next place. And so you want to tell Kashtor that when you leave drive mode and enter walking mode, it will start computing based on you know, three miles an hour or whatever it is you walk at, um, as opposed to what you might be driving at. So you can switch back and forth at any one waypoint. And then when you reach the point where you're done walking, let's say, you can switch back to drive mode and the trip will be planned again at drive mode from there. The travel time between caches is a function of whether you're driving or walking, obviously. So, Rich, yeah, uh, asking a, a question quickly here. Do, do you have to then go recalculate your uh, arrival times, your your ETAs? Well, because if you switch from walking to driving, of course, you're going to slow down significantly. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna go into this in some more. Oh, time. okay. Because this Never is mind. this is an Sorry. area with lots of complexity, and people get confused about it. And I want to make sure they've got their head around it right. Um, optimizing waypoints, which is what people think they want, right? I've got all these waypoints. I want them in the perfect order so I can get through them in the minimum time. It's the traveling salesman problem. It's it's a it's an mm -hmm. essentially NP complete unsolvable problem. You can get Decent answers, but you're never going to guarantee you got the perfect one. So it uses a lot of compute power. Um, it's not recommended at all for hiking. Typically, when you're hiking, you're on a trail. There aren't a lot of options. You're going to go down the trail. Maybe you'll hit a fork and you go one way or the other, but your, your speed and everything means you pretty much know what cache is going to be next. Mm -hmm. Not hard to figure out. If you're in a car and there's a maze of twisted little roads all alike, uh, then you may have need some help here. Um, and it's go, dark and you may be eaten by a Gru. Ooh, yes. Okay. So if you go to find to all do this, there's an edit menu with a sort and prioritize waypoints option. So you open that up and it will show you all of your waypoints. Now here's where you got to be kind of not crazy because if you have taken and just randomly dumped in hundreds of waypoints and say, figure it out for me, it's going to churn and churn and churn and churn and probably never finish. And you'll feel frustrated. Um, I've done 50 or 60 on a reasonable little PC here. I've done about all close to that number on the pad, although it takes longer. The reason computer matters is it's all done in your browser in JavaScript. So the speed of your computer affects how many caches you can let the algorithm chew on before you get tired of waiting for it to finish. Um, it doesn't create a route in the cache to a route word sense. Uh, it only creates a suggested ordering for the waypoints, which is a different thing than computing the times between them, for example, and the ETAs and such. It and the other computation both use your first and your last waypoint as the ends of the trip. So you, it's not going to move those, but everything in between is fair game for shuffling around to improve matters. So make sure you've got where you want to start and where you want to end set. If you do dump in a whole lot of stuff, um, which could happen, let's say, if you brought in a couple of bookmark lists and they're strewn all over the place and you really don't have a lot of control over that, at least initially, then there's some things you can do. You can try grouping, looking at the map and say, oh, all of this cluster over here are all kind of near each other. 
So I'll just go in and only mark those and let it optimize the subset of what I'm doing, which gives it a much smaller number to work on. So you've got, let's say, two contiguous, two regions, and there's a road in between them, a simple case. So you optimize one of them, you optimize the other, and just plan on driving between them. So you can you can break up your problem and and into chunks that are that are reasonably optimizable. The other alternative is to break them into subtrips. And when you do them in pieces, it's kind of like doing a subtrip. But you could go that route too. But just remember, um, be a little bit careful with how many you dump in there and expect to have something that'll finish in reasonable time. Now, having sorted them into a reasonable order, you now have a start and an end with things in between in the right order. If you just added them in the right order in the first place, bang, you're good. So now you want to make a true route of these things. The routing mechanism uses open street maps, roads and trails, and it respects the order of your waypoints. It's not going to rearrange anything. What it is going to do is compute the travel time from one waypoint to the next uh, based on the data OpenStreetMaps has, right? Um, one of the last things you do when you're planning, you've got everything done, you've, you've, you've done adding new waypoints because you're going to remember something at the last minute or see something you want to do. The very last thing you do is order a new route calculation so that you guarantee that you are uh, current and complete, right? And then you, you, you lock it down, essentially. Um, and wait till the end to do it. You can do it a little earlier if you want, but there isn't much point until you've settled down everything else. And you do that, you've got your, and then you can set your ETA on the first one if you want to see what it looks like, how long it's going to take. And you can look at that and say, ooh, I'm too ambitious today. <laughs> this spilled into tomorrow. And, and decide what you want to do about it. The drive time, you may get some screwy drive times because it's dependent on the accuracy of OpenStreetMap road speed data. And not all of that's completely accurate. I know Tom Frey reported that it told him it was going to take eight hours in Utah, and it took him five because the, the speed data on the Utah map roads is not very accurate in many cases. So do a sanity check with Google just for kicks about your overall route. And if it, Google says it's going to take you about five hours and it says here it's going to take you about eight, well, you should become an OpenStreetMaps improver person. <laughs> Feedback new data about the proper speeds on these roads so everyone I, can benefit. I actually had to deal with that this weekend too. And that was one of the... Uh, dilemmas is I started working on that. I'm like, wait a minute. Google says it's going to take me three hours, but cash tour is saying that it's going to take me four and a half and there's only 20 minutes and stops. Uh, yeah, something seems wrong there. Yeah. If, if you get crazy drive times, you may have an issue with routing. I had one of those where I accidentally had the trip in hiking mode and it was trying to route me. And I, why does it take five hours to get from here to there? And then finally I spotted it. But um, yeah, look for craziness and, and then sanity check it. So the other thing Cashier will do for you is estimate stop times at each cache you're going to do. It has a bunch of heuristics that it applies based on difficulty and terrain and how far off from where you, where, how far off the road it is and the phase of the moon and a few other things. Um, and Mostly they do a reasonable job, something marginally better I, you know, than just saying every cache takes five minutes. Uh, but if you think it's crazy, if you look at it and say, no way is that virtual going to take me that long to walk up and snap a picture and walk back to the car. Um, and so you want to, if it is, has a long out stop time, more than 30 minutes, you'll see an hourglass icon, which means maybe you want to take a look at that one and see if it, you think it'll really take that long too. If you don't think so, you can go in and override that stop time and put in what you think is the proper stop time. In some cases, it might be longer because you know you're going to spend a long time solving this puzzle out there, let's say, in the field. There's one other factor that goes into computing the stop time, and it's called the admin time. It's a fixed amount you can put on the trip that says, for every cache, I need this extra amount of time to deal with administrative things like getting back to the car, getting the thing back, holder, uh, my device back in its holder, getting it plugged in, whatever it is you're going to do, logging, 
uh, you can set a number that's just fed into each cache um, and whatever you think is your reasonable number. All right. I set it to zero once. That was probably a mistake. <laughs> Not if you're fast. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about going on a trip. Um, one of the features, if you go caching with a bunch of other people and plan trips with a bunch of other people as opposed to soloing, is you might want to set up a group for your, your friends who are going to participate in planning your trip. You might delegate parts of it to them. So you can create a group and you can add them as members to it. They have to be on, have to be have cash to accounts. And then you can create a group dashboard. And subsequently, if that group plans other trips, you don't need to invite them to each trip. They're automatically included in any in trip the group is working on. If you want group members to have additional rights on a trip, then you need to invite them as co-hosts or you're going to need to go in and change their edit rights. So there's various levels of permissions. Mostly you're going to want the people who are helping you plan it to be co-hosts and they will be able to cooperate, do their part of the work and comment on what you're doing or say, hey, guy, did you notice this one? You may have observers who have view only privileges. Um, you know, maybe somebody wants to keep an eye on your trip so they have an idea where you're going to be next Tuesday or whatever. Um, but they can't do anything to it. And they have to be formally invited to the trip to see, to be uh, an observer. So with the groups, you can do a lot of things um, collaboratively, which is kind of cool because people enjoy going out and multi-car trips to do something and so on. Probably not needing cash tour for power trail, however. Um, up before the app came along, printouts were the thing. And they still are for a lot of people. Cash Tour has a print menu for your trip and a very long list of different formats in which you can print it um, with some unusual names honoring the person who requested that printout format or whatever. Um, so poke around, find one you like that has in it what you like. There's simple and there's detailed. And simple has much less information. Detailed has a lot more information. And somewhere in between, you'll find it. What a lot of people really want in their printout with the app now is simply the information about the description from a uh, multicache, for example, where your questions are lurking in there, uh, or a virtual, where what they have to do is lurking in there. And they want that to show up in the printout so they can scribble on the hard copy the answers to these things. So those as options to get those things special that you can turn on to say, put descriptions into my, into my printout. So yeah, printouts. That one they've uh, used, uh, you know, create the PDF through the browser and send that to other people for comment and yeah. getting everyone on the same page long before you go and do the uh, GPX files and things. Yeah. Since the print is really just opened up in a web screen and you can print the screen to PDF, no problem. You can share yeah. that with people who are not in Cash Tour, for example. Exactly. And it's a good way to get uh, uh, that to people who aren't as uh, savvy. <laughs> yes, indeed. Just let yeah. them Everyone email can you. PDF. They'll email uh, your comments back, right? Yeah, I know those people. Aww. Wait, I may be one of those people. Don't disparage, <laughs> Don't disparage those people. I too can contribute. So we have. Yeah, they're the ones that solve the puzzles for me most of the time. Oh, yeah. So we've now got a group, maybe planned our trip. We've got a printout. Um, now we've got to actually get close to where our trip needs to hit the metal. We need to get a GPX file into our GPSR or into Cachely or into whatever it is we're using. That is, get it out of Cache Tour and into our device that we're going to execute with. There is a option called download in the menu list where you can choose create trip package. And the trip package has a bunch of radio buttons. You can say, what do you want in your trip package? First one is Waypoints GPX. Uh, another one is Waypoints CSV, if you're a spreadsheet kind of guy. Um, there's also some new things. You can get a Garmin driving route in your package or a TomTom -tom itinerary, which you can load into your, your, your Garmin device that can 
navigate in your car or your TomTom -tom device. And presto, you can do the navigation through those devices in your car. And several folks have tried this and thought it was quite wonderful. So that's a new thing. A packing list can also be put in there, things you really don't want to leave home without. That's a relatively new one as well. And the list of what's in the trip package continues to grow. Um, and you turn on what you want. And then nice. you can download the GPX that it produces from a download screen and install it in whatever you want. Separately, you probably want to about that time go download into the app the trip as well because you have committed at the point you've generated the trip package typically. So you might as well let the app have a copy too. That you're going to use it in offline mode typically and want to get, take care of that. Don't forget it, right? <laughs> Until you get into no service area or something. A tool that, that may be of help to you, there's not a lot of webcams out there anymore, but if you use the webcam assistant and it happens to work on the webcam you have, then you can make your life simpler. One of the problems with some webcams is they're in areas where you can't use your cell phone because there's no service to scrap, screen, screen grab your picture. And so the usual strategy was get somebody at home, tell them at exact, you know, 3.30 in the afternoon, go on, look for me, and then take my picture. Uh, the webcam assistant can help you with that kind of thing. You can, if the webcam is supported, we use your controlled ones or not, for example. Uh, you can you can tell it, register it with your trip. You activate webcam assistant. And it comes up and you can say, at this time of day, for this long, at this many intervals, I want you to grab pictures and store them. So you don't have to rely on someone at home to be sitting at their computer necessarily. That is really cool. Yeah, definitely a cool one. And it, it kind of reminds me, though, of uh, some of the... Um, I can't remember uh, what they were, but like the uh, uh, monitoring well type stations had uh, webcams that we've done a couple of them, but they're still dial up. Oh, <laughs> so it would take a photo every like five minutes and then dial it up, send it, disconnect and just keep going. So you had to sit there for like 10 minutes before you actually got the uh, uh, photo to show up. So this would be really handy. But again, you, you if you set those like five minute intervals, you're going to have to sit there for like 10 minutes until it uh, catches you. Yeah. Some of them are streaming and those are wonderful. But yeah. the uh, the one in the DMV office uh, uh, that we went to from at the at the Giga, uh, Giga stock was every five minutes. And so we filled the lobby with people who were not there for their driver's licenses or anything, <laughs> waiting for the camera to go off. Yeah, I understand that they were not too happy about that. No, it didn't. They weren't used to that that volume of people wandering through, and and, and I don't think they 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 were super unhappy because we went away in a day or two, and, and they didn't <laughs> hear from us again. Uh, so then we've 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 run our trip, and we're thinking about maybe we need to end our trip eventually. That happens. Uh, sometimes you plan a trip, and things the stars don't align and you're not going to be able to execute it, right? Um, the airline canceled your flight, uh, you take an ill, whatever. You want to delete the trip. Well, like caches, you cannot delete them. At most, you can do the equivalent of archiving them because we don't want to lose history. There's information there. You might want to resurrect that one one day. You can do what's called canceling an active trip. It never, It doesn't go away but it's like an archived cache in the sense that um, system still knows about it. You can, you know, and, and it drops out of your purview. So you're not having it staring you in the face, bugging you. If you're the kind of person who doesn't like to see things like that lying around. So cancel is your friend. Um, if you do cancel it, you can't get it back without second line support. So think twice before you hit the button, but you know, you can clone it and, and get a copy of it. When you have ended a trip, Trips automatically end by the end date you set in your in your trip plan. If you reach that date and pass it, your trip is ended. Now you can go in for up to a week later and edit that trip and make changes to it, like change the end date because you took you three more days to do the trip than you thought it was going to take. Or um, if it does reach the state where it's ended and a week has passed, it's it's locked down. You can't change it. 
without going to second line support and having them release it back to you. Again, it usually is not a problem. If you think it's going to be a problem, you don't know when you're going to run the trip. You don't want it dying on you for some reason and getting locked down. Go into the trip info and check the box that says that the um, you haven't decided on an end time for this trip. That's also what's called draft mode or something. That trip will move to your list of draft trips and it will go away. It won't time out. And you can come back and take it back out of draft mode when you're ready and, and do something with it. So a trip that's months away, you don't know when it's going to be, put it in draft mode while you're planning it. Then you don't have to guess what the dates are going to, going to become. The reason keeping these trips around is they're awfully good for statistics, ultimately, long term. If you've got data on all these trips everybody's run, you can start to gather some insights. And Tom Frey wants to be able to do that. So that's why he doesn't want you just arbitrarily deleting trips out from under it. After, the other thing at the end of a trip is something called the post-trip assistant. It's a tool that can produce trip reports that shows you the caches, uh, find times. Um, you can use the GSAC macro to send publish logs via there. You can, uh, more importantly for groups especially, you can track getting the answers together for your virtuals and your earth caches that you might not have done on the road. You may have gathered the information, you haven't sit down, gotten down and digested it, and figured out just why this particular erratic that you found in the middle of Wisconsin got there. Um, so you have to answer that. Once you work it all out, you and the team who are in a group, let's say, or you solo, can put the answers in to these and the, the post-trip assistant will help you, give you one, one click access to the cash owner's profile where you can submit these answers you've prepared to them. So you can prepare them offline in, in the cash tour post-trip assistant. And then when you're ready, fire them off quite easily. And if you've got a group doing it, then you can, again, you can split the work up. So there's your post-trip assistant. Um, how are we doing on time? We're down to the last section called miscellaneous. I think we can make it through. Okay, good. Uh, save places is something lots of people think is a cool thing. If you've got waypoints you often use in creating a trip, like where I live, because I'm starting from home, you can create a saved place and store your coordinates and things in there. And when you go to create a trip, you can add that first off and last off because you're going to come back home and you don't have to type it in every time. Now we talked about another thing. We talked about templates last time. These are canned trips that somebody has figured out for you, like tour San Francisco or something. And you can clone them and make them your own and do things with them. There's a separate thing called lists, which are distinct and different than templates. A list is kind of like a geocaching.com list or bookmark list. It's a collection of caches in no particular order. Think cache across America. There's no good order for those particularly. Um, it's a list you might dip into to get things to add to your trip, depending on you'd have a, multiple sets of lists. You know, this is my catch across America list. This is my uh, webcam list. And you can dip into these and add them to your trip from this list. You don't have to keep researching them and finding them again. So lists serve that purpose. Uh, templates are really there for People who want to, you want to like give them the benefit of the trip you just did, which is so wonderful that they're sure to want to do it again. Okay, the last thing is talk about is tools. There's a tools menu. Uh, if you go to the dashboard itself, the upper left corner icon of Cash Tourno, you get a cool list showing events near you. So you don't have to find some other way to find out events that are happening, you know, this week or something like that in your neighborhood. You also will find a new thing when there's a promotion on from geocaching.com, like why I'm baggy, you might be a geocacher if dot, dot, dot. Um, Tom Frey has tried to add calculators that first explain the rules of the trip correctly because geocaching.com sometimes is a bit fuzzy about how the calculation and rules are gonna work and so there was an interaction on this most recent one to clarify two or three points with them and get it exactly right. And so the right description is in 
cash tour now, and a calculator to compute your, your stats. This was also there for the hidden creatures earlier. And so hopefully we'll be there for future promotions as well. So that's brand new. Tom Frey sat down in the middle of his holiday and typed it in one night in the motel room somewhere. The other one I like is upcoming mega events and upcoming souvenirs you can earn in the next few months. As soon as someone learns of a new coming souvenir, it goes on the list. So you can see sort of almost out through the end of the year what you're going to be able to earn in the way of CEDOs or International Geocaching Day or GIF, GFF. There's a coordinate tool in case you need to convert coordinates to different formats or measure the distance between two coordinates or find the antipodes so you can go there. Uh, lots of cool things there. I mentioned geocoding last time. It's, I'll mention it again because it's awfully useful if you want to get the coordinates of the hotel you're going to uh, or a, a, a restaurant or something like that to add to your trip. The geocoder will often be able to do that for you and directly add it to your trip by just clicking add to my, add to my trip. The final thing is we talked a lot about support last time. And if you get into the deep weeds and you've got a trip that is, you just can't figure it out, uh, they may ask you, and the support person may ask you, what's your trip number, your trip ID? If you look at the end of your URL when you're looking at the trip, it says, pardon my Norwegian, Felistur slash a number. And that is the number of your trip. And that's what you want to provide to the support person who can help you because you have to give them, you can give them permission to impersonate you, to become you and see your trip and see what's really going on that no one else, you can't describe adequately to the support person. Um, and so people who have this privilege, and there's a small number of them, uh, can step in and, and deep dive into what's going wrong and figure it out for you. But they need that ID to do that. So I think we have made it through today. We don't need a third show for this particular Spill. Wow! Yeah, this is this is I think the uh, first time we've actually made it through everything on the uh, uh, cash tour uh, uh, shows. So, yeah, impressive. All right, and people are probably going to have to go back and listen to this two or three times to actually absorb all this information. I haven't been watching the chat. The chat. I don't know if there've been questions over there or not. If so, Tom Frey's probably already answered them, but <laughs> <laughs> and written some I'll more. I'll tell you, <laughs> I am amazed at how deep this tool is becoming. I mean, Definitely. it's doing more and more. I had no idea you could, you know, pop up uh, upcoming um, souvenirs. I love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was uh, that was new for Planetary Pursuit, I believe. I'm sure well, that, Tom Frey will let me know, but yeah, I think that's when the he first tried it. The the actual promotion management tool. Yeah. Now I think I think Chris is talking about the actual upcoming souvenirs from from HQ. Oh, are going to appear. In the next few months, is that right? Yes. Okay. Uh, under tools, the upcoming souvenirs link. Mm -hmm. Yeah, got it. That's pretty cool. I think it's a wonderful benefit. I don't go anywhere else now. I don't have to necessarily monitor HQ's blogs and things to figure out when this is going to happen or what's going to happen. Right. Exactly. So, did we get any questions that were? Um, uh, Tom Frey says the souvenir list has been in there for a long time, but the uh, planetary pursuit was the first campaign that they added the calculator for. Ah, okay. uh, I think he's probably now in the mode of doing it for future ones. Yeah, that's yeah. HQ seems mm -hmm. seems seems to be eager to inundate us with uh, promo campaigns. Hey, it gets people out caching. I know it does. So it works. Right. They're going to keep doing it. Oh yeah. Well, you know, that hundred, hundred in a month made some people struggle, but this one's a lot easier, I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it gave me a good chance to, uh, use cash tour on a more local, almost like a power trail route and get some uh, good time with the app. Mm hmm. Cool. So lots well, of uh, stuff to digest here for everyone. And I'm sure we'll have you back before too long. We don't have that next show scheduled yet though. You were muttering about December-ish sometime. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're looking at a show because I know everyone wants more. So Limax yeah. can calm down. You know, <laughs> we, I promise we'll do more cash tour. I promise. I, yeah, he comes to lunch if I don't uh, do shows. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Saw him just this week. 
<laughs> All right. Well, and we'll have link to uh, Cash Tour for anyone who can't uh, figure out the spelling or whatever, because you know, for us uh, English speakers who are kind of, well, let's say naive, <laughs> it is a little bit uh, tough to spell. Ah. <laughs> you just, you just spell C A C H E T U R as T O U R. It'll work. Oh yeah, and, and yeah, I was going to say he has the wrong spelling supported as well. <laughs> or is it the right spelling that he bought? Mm. <laughs> all right, thanks again, Rich, for joining mm-hmm. us and uh, giving us all of this great info. I'm happy to have been here and and share the. Uh, information and some experiences using it worked well i can tell people to go out and give it a try definitely and thank you to our uh, patrons for all of your support a quick reminder that it is the end of the month so your uh, charges are going to get racked up pretty soon and patreon claims that they've fixed most of those problems with the processors and with the banks that uh, happened last time so if you did have a problem with the card decline and all that stuff you don't worry about it. It should go through just fine this time. Uh, and also, make sure to head over to the uh, Patreon website. We did post the link to uh, add the next uh, patron hangout to your calendar. So all of that's over there, and we really appreciate all your support. If you're not already a patron, you might want to head over there, check it out, and uh, see all the extra content and support the show, which helps keep all the uh, lights on and the show's coming to you. That's right. If you're not a patron, you don't know what you're not missing. (laughs) Wait. Well, you'll know a little bit of what you're not missing. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, and Daryl does such a great job each and every week to schedule more upcoming shows. Next week, we're talking going caching. That's what I'm going to call the premier mega event of the season. Uh, That's going caching 2018 with uh, coordinators Jim and Andy. September 13th, we're talking about the R experiment. The R. The the AR experiment. I did find an AR cache on my trip. I forgot to mention that. Ooh. (laughs) Yes. September 20th, we're doing one of my favorite shows, a randomized show. September 27th, we're talking about power trails with Shorty Nitz and Hopefully, Scott Burks. But, you know, you never know about Scott. So check the Cashew Maniacs website at cashewmaniacs.com for more on the Geo Gearheads, including show notes for this and all of our episodes. We love hearing from our listeners, so leave us feedback by emailing geogearheads at cashewmaniacs.com or through social media. Your support helps keep the Cashew Maniacs shows coming. Please consider becoming a patron through a link on our website to support the Cashew Maniacs shows. Geo Gearheads is produced by Chris Seffenauer and Daryl Wanberg. This show is copyright 2018 by Daryl Wanberg. All rights reserved. <laughs>